Up next on course is outdoor education and environmental literacy here in Anne Arundel County. Welcome and thanks for joining us for On Course and Anne Arundel County Public Schools journey. We intend to take you on a fascinating trip throughout the county featuring all the amazing that happens in our classrooms each and every day. Our travels will explore all aspects of the division of academic and strategic initiatives whose focus is directed solely towards supporting all students and their learning travels. Advanced studies, programs, curriculum and instruction, partnerships and development and marketing, as well as professional growth and development all feature prominently in the success of our many students and we intend to share the many aspects of their work on this series. Welcome aboard and enjoy the ride. Our show today features many of the exciting and innovative opportunities our Office of Environmental Literacy and Outdoor Education offers our students here in the county. And we're delighted to have Dr. Melanie Parker, the coordinator of environmental literacy and outdoor education, here with us to join in our journey. Mel, thanks and welcome for, to the show. Thanks for having me, Skip. Really appreciate it. Well, for context for our audience, tell us a little bit about yourself and the program you oversee. So, Skip, what I do is basically the same as, an as a science coordinator or a math coordinator. Okay. I oversee all the curriculum but related to environmental literacy. I also oversee all of our outdoor programs. Okay. Some people will be familiar with Arlington Echo or Camp Woodlands, so sure. I oversee all of those programs as well. Awesome. That's a lot of responsibility, but I know it's an integral part of what the students do and engage in here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Speaking of engaging, let's talk a little bit about how environmental literacy really does filter into all those other courses that you, or those content offices that you just suggested. Yeah, so environmental literacy has been, outdoor outdoor education has been part of the Anne Arundel County public school experience for 50 years. Yeah. And it started a little bit differently. It was more of an experience in which uh, teachers were able to bring out students okay. and have an outdoor experience, especially at Arlington Echo. There was some integration with the curriculum, but in about 2010, uh, we actually had a um, passage of a high school graduation requirement oh, okay. in environmental literacy. So that really kind of changed a little bit about how we operate. We have environmental literacy standards now. Sure. So in order to implement those standards, um, it really is integrated in with our science, math, social studies, wherever we can make a good fit with using the environment as a context for learning. And that, such a, that, that in and of itself gives the, the, the students uh, something in which they're already naturally excited about um, and, and makes the learning in, uh, meaningful. Yes, exactly. I mean, it really makes it engaging. You know, what, we're, what we try to do, and I'm lucky enough to be able to oversee something where we are engaging students through really hands-on activities, right. very authentic, and really connecting them to the environment. And that's our main goal, too. So you mentioned the high school graduation requirement having environmental literacy standards, but you're a K-12 program, yes? Yes. So yes. let's talk a little bit about the younger age, the younger years. What, what is it that, that uh, the outdoor ed program offers our younger learners? So many people might be familiar with Camp Woodlands, which okay. is our kindergarten program, in which students are, have curriculum within the classroom that they begin with, and then they go out to Camp Woodlands to kind of kind of enhance what's going on and have a greater understanding. The kindergarten program is called uh, Trees Are Terrific. Okay. And so our little guys really are focused on uh, using the trees to learn about everything from math to uh, the environment and how we're related and how what trees do for us. So you've got a classroom component, something that happens back at the school, but then the kids actually do what it is they're learning about in the in the classroom. Exactly. It's really to connect them and give them that that hands-on and engaging experience, you know, so that they kind of it, it really builds in what they're learning. Sure. It yeah. gives them context for that learning. Yeah. So, how about first grade? What what's special about first grade? First grade is is an amazing program with our monarchs and um, basically what students are doing is they are are raising monarchs in the classroom. This is usually in the okay. fall. All right. And it is an interdisciplinary unit where they are measuring things. They're they're learning about the monarch and its migration uh, all the way down to Mexico, uh, how it you know, how it metamorphoses over to, you know from a caterpillar all the way through all its stages. Wow. Um, so they really learn. So there's a lot of science concepts in there. Um, they learn about the habitats and things that are going on and okay. what affects the monarchs environmentally um, and how to take care of them. They have gardens at their school that they engage with and raise the milkweed, which is the monarch's primary food source. So this really is an engaging engaging project that lasts pretty much the whole year. 
that's a full cycle. I mean, you go from the having the, the chrysalis all the way through f flying away. Right, and then they come back in the spring. That's so. awesome. And, right. they, and so the students are really responsible for and document that growth and the development of the monarchs throughout the entire process. You exactly. mentioned it, the, the whole mathematics that goes with that is really, really instrumental. That's yeah. pretty amazing. And so we've been able to take the environmental literacy standards and put them in to make them meaningful regardless of the content. Right, right. It really matches up. We look for those areas where it makes a really strong match in regard to how we can use the environment as a way to teach these other content and con concepts. And I know you're big on outdoor teaching spaces too, so let's talk a little bit about that. Tell me some of the things that your, your division has done to support schools. So one of the things that we want to do is really get our teachers to utilize their schoolyard spaces and okay. use, use the environment really for teaching, right? And not just going out and, and you know, doing a piece of paper on the outside, we want them to actually use whatever's out there okay. to teach those concepts. And it's just a whole other aspect of, of doing a classroom, right? It's the outdoor classroom. So we're working with schools to really help build more of utilizing the outdoor classroom and build outdoor classrooms so they have spaces that they can use um, as kind of kickoff points to, to do other curriculum. Now, uh, the pieces. natural connection to me is science. So environmental Obviously. science, environmental literacy. But you're not talking about just science. You're no, talking no. about other domains. So talk to me about how you've encouraged classroom teachers to use mathematics outside or the reading outside. Well, it could be as simple as you know going outside and and uh, measuring a tree, right? It, it could be, you know, let's look at angles. You know, wh where do we find angles outside? You know, it's really just kind of exploring and making it authentic for the students and using that space to do that. With poetry, you, know, you could go out and, and easily find natural things that you can, can write about, draw about, sure. read about, you know, so it really is an exciting way to engage our students. And a beautiful natural extension of the classroom. Absolutely. So uh, we're doing chronologically, something happens very special in fourth grade. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, our fourth graders all come to Arlington Echo, um, our outdoor education facility, um, where they can either, co they either come for a day or overnight. It's school choice in regard to whether they, s they do the overnight program. Okay. Um, it's directly tied to whatever's going on in the science, particularly in the science uh, classroom. Okay. Um, so they come out, they, they basically are extending what they're learning in the classroom and gathering data to take back to the classroom to kind of continue to do a project that's in the classroom. Besides that, also though, we were doing a lot with doing environmental stuff. So we want to hit a lot of those standards that we're doing when they come out and so that we can use our Arlington Echo, which has so many great features oh, sure that you know we can actually give that experience to those students. So the students have opportunities to be you know seining live fish out of the water, to being in the forest, to really kind of engaging in things that, frankly, a lot of our students don't have anymore. And with the overnight experience, they really do live in nature, don't they? Well, they are in cabins. True. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we really do try to, it is, it's really a neat bonding experience for our, for our students to stay overnight with their teachers and with parents. Um, we couldn't do it without either one of them. So um, it's a great experience for them to really, to really get to know the, each other. So speaking of Arlington Necker, there's yeah. something special coming up. Yes, um, very soon, we're going to, in April, we're going to have our 50th anniversary. Um, wow. So Arlington Echo was first rented and then purchased by the school system 50 years ago. So on April 21st, uh, we're going to have a big open house and we'll have food and music and, and a lot of our partners that come and, and help uh, that work with us, you know, come and actually do some environmental activities as well as, well as us will be doing environmental activities. So I hope, hope folks can make it out. That is awesome. It sounds like a really great celebration of not only the property, but the learning that's happened over the course of years in that particular setting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fabulous. <laughs> Let's take a, a quick back to third grade. Uh, we were talking about the Arlington Echo experience in fourth grade, but third grade really starts putting some, some understanding about what it means to be an environmentalist in the classroom. And so we do that. We have the Environmental Action Project. Talk to me a little bit about how the environmental literacy standards and the work with social studies and mathematics have really created that unit. So one of the things that, that is part of the environmental literacy standards is that we want students to really be inquiring and finding out you know, the information themselves, right? So in third grade, we're really kind of introducing them to that concept in that they are 
basically researching environmental issues locally, okay. right? Sure. And then they get to kind of... Of which there are many, so right? There, <laughs> there are a few, and which they are then able to um, kind of decide which one they might want to work on and gather more data. So they learn about collecting data, you know, they go out, and it could be very simple things. Of course, we want to keep them uh, things that students can do to really take action. Okay. And that's an important part of, of the environmental literacy, too, is that we want those students to take action regarding some of these issues. So they really are, it, and it basically is introduced in social studies, so there's a lot of concepts. And if you think about social studies, is it, we're really talking about the human impact on the environment and sure. how we relate to it. Makes sense. So it's really important to you know, have them kind of introduce and look at all those different types of environmental issues. So the students really are engaging in their own learning okay. um, and then exploring it a little bit further and then how can I, how can I make a difference with it? So and this isn't a single one idea in, a, in the classroom. This could be a classroom of 25 students each doing with their own or partnering? They could, yes. They could do it individually or it might be as a whole class. And they, you know, there's opportunities to kind of vote on it to make it a doable project because okay. we really want this, the teachers to be able to assist them in doing something that they can be successful at. Meaningful and that action component really is important that they should have the capacity to put in place whatever they researched and whatever they thought could be possible, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. So let's uh, jump ahead, fifth grade, another important grade here mm -hmm. in Anne Arundel County Public Schools with more than 50 miles of shoreline uh, being uh, capable of being in the water is really important. So what does your office do to support that? Yeah, so uh, our drown proofing program, which is really about water safety and self-rescue and helping to rescue others, okay. it really is about engaging the students and learning how to, if something happens around the water, that they are able to, to be safe. Um, and it's been a really uh, successful program in that we've been able to get our students engaged in, in learning those things. It's not about learning how to swim, right. um, but it, it really is about being safe around the water. Of which there's plenty of it, so Lots why not, it, yeah. especially with, with our, our particular county and the circumstances we have with all of our tributaries, rivers, streams, and all that stuff. We do want our children to be safe, and so you've then tied environmental literacy standards into health and safety standards for, for other, other areas. That's pretty awesome the way that, that your office has been able to branch out and be in so many different um, schools to, to, to really make an impact. That engagement piece is, is key. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things ab important about environmental literacy. You know, our office does a lot, but there are definitely all, some of our other offices that are doing a lot with the environment because it is a great way to learn. So many of our STEM programs do a lot using the environment, um, sure, as sure. well as our signature program at uh, Broadneck High School, which is in environmental literacy as well. well let's talk about that. What, so, so all 12 of our high schools have a signature, have something for which they stand, and Broadneck chose environmental I issues or environmental mm -hmm. liter literacy mm -hmm. to be theirs. Tell me a little bit about how your office and that particular school engages in terms of awareness and, and research and that sort of thing. Well, we do work a lot with them in regard to helping the students, you know, e examine some of these environmental issues and provide support in a lot of their programs as well. And then sometimes we have a lot of their students that are also helping us as well. Oh, so that's great. having high school students that, c that come out and help with some of our other programs or even be engaged in, in summer, uh, some of our summer research okay. um, opportunities and those types of Neat. things as well. And so the idea at Broadneck is that by having environmental literacy ideals throughout the, the course of a day or, or the thematic approach, you're actually getting the, re the residual benefit of having them then come back to you and help in your program. Absolutely, uh, you know, and uh, I think with the, the economy and, 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 you know, this green economy that we're having and where we are in regard to the environment and our relationship with it, you know, I think that's an important thing to have these college and career opportunities where students can be engaged with professionals um, in the field to, to really be, you know, learn about how they can be engaged in the environment. And make a difference, right? And Doesn't make a difference, that's absolutely. That's what it all comes back to. Yes. Um, let's uh, skip back to sixth grade, uh, Chesapeake Connections. Yes. Pretty cool program. Yes, we have a, uh, at sixth grade, we're, again, it's integrated in with the curriculum, but we have opportunities in which we've really engaged with our partners, and one of those is Anne Arundel County Department of Public Works. Okay. They do very large scale restoration, pro stream restoration projects, okay. and our students have the opportunity to be engaged with some of those projects. And besides learning about the engineering of the projects and right. those types of things, they go out and help to plant some of the projects oh, and actually do some water quality work there and kind of learn about the whole process of, of how these types of projects and, and the good that they're doing and how they clean our water before it reaches the bay. So they're, they're 
engaged in that. Some of them are actually do uh, underwater grasses where they grow okay. uh, submerged aquatic vegetation, as they call it, SAVs. And uh, they grow that in the classroom and plant it out in some of our local tributaries and streams. And all of that is to try to make the quality of our water environment better than it is right now, right? Yes, absolutely. We're focused completely around the Chesapeake Bay with that program. And, and that's primarily a sixth grade, sixth, yes. seventh grade middle it school is, experience? It's, it's sixth grade, yeah. So mm -hmm. jumping up into the high school, and I know you mentioned Broadneck uh, with their signature, but really your the incredible opportunity our students have now with the environmental science course, the high school graduation course, the the, the really where this all comes together, you've had you've been very instrumental in helping to design and implement that. Yes, it's a, it's a science course, the environmental yep. science course, and, um, specifically to basically it's wrapped around again. It's actually wrapped around water and the Chesapeake Bay. Yep. Um, one of the things that we've been working very closely with is not only with some of the curriculum aspects of it, but also being able to provide experiences and connect with some of our partners um, throughout the county and outside of our county, where we can they can work with professionals or have a field experience. I think the, the environmental science course is exciting in that it really is bringing in those aspects and, and having field experiences as being part of what they're doing, whether it's on the school grounds or whether it's getting out to one of our local parks um, and those types of things as well. So you've been able to be that connection, that, yep. that bridge, that those classroom teachers and the environmental experiences you can kind of put those together. Yeah, and helping to connect with, with parks and recreation regarding our local parks that they can walk to or, or even, you know, give a short bus ride to or even some of our other um, partners like Chesapeake Bay Foundation or Annapolis Maritime Museum, some of these other partners that have really been instrumental in, in helping to facilitate some of these environmental experiences. So we've discussed a number of times about that engagement piece. Really, that's the focus of Anne Arundel County Public Schools instruction this year is student engagement, really having them do with what they learn, not just learn what they learn. And so this environmental science course is the epitome of that. It is the actual class where you actually put into place what you learn, whether it be those field experiences that you, you mentioned, or really the ultimate would be if the students left the classroom and did something on their own. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's where we want it all to go. You know, part of what we're trying to do with the environment and learning about the environment is that we want the students to connect, right? And we want them to connect with nature um, and learn about the environment. But, you know, so some of it's knowledge, you know, some of it is just kind of a get a better understanding, but also it really is kind of the motivation to kind of go that next step, which is, you know, what can I do to help preserve the environment and take care of the environment? I love it. I, I was once asked, um, what do I want to be when I grow up? I don't hear that question asked so much n now as I hear, what do you want to, what problem do you want to solve when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And so I was in a classroom and I actually posed that, that exact question to a room full of environmental science students and really the variety of what they really, they actually feel like they can make a difference and that is very impactful for students in here in our system. Absolutely. So yeah. we've mentioned a number of times partners. Uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, DPW and, and others. Let's talk a little bit about what makes environmental literacy and outdoor ed here in Anne Arundel County Public Schools happen. So it's not a solo effort, right? You've got no. lots of folks that you work <laughs> with. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, that it's, and part of it is, you know, building those partnerships where sure. we can have access for our students and for our teachers, whether it's through professional development with, okay. with organizations like the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, who mm -hmm. helps us run a couple of professional development Great opportunities. Sure. And then, you know, with the Annapolis Maritime Museum, who does some of our um, sixth grade program as part okay. of that Chesapeake Connections, they also help do a whole, uh, some of our schools just focus on oysters. Oh, and okay. so they go out there to, to learn from them, the kind of more of the experts. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, resources like Department of Natural Resources, uh, the, the uh, NOAA in regard to funding and helping oh, right. to support some of the things, and the Chesapeake Bay Trust. You know, and then it's not just it's not just external. Of course, you know we are collaborating a lot internally too with all of our different uh, content areas sure, and, and advanced studies right. as well. Yeah. So um, some the things we've discussed so far are the things that are offered to all students all in, in each of our schools. But there's some optional opportunities as well. Uh, whether it's student interest or teacher uh, interest, there's some things that your office affor affords us that people can opt into. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about those little turtles? <laughs> yeah, well, we do uh, we do run a program that is with the Department of Natural Resources and with the um, uh, Port of Baltimore and the Maryland Environmental Service, and we do a, a terrapin raising program. So Love it's it. a raise yeah. and release program where students basically have terrapins in the classroom from 
quarter size to wow. hamburger size, um, where they're raising them all all during the school year, and then they return from where we got them in uh, off of in Popular Island, okay. where uh, you know the students will go out there to release their turtle. Um, it's really an engaging program to really have Amazing. you know that little guy I would say little guy in the in the classroom with them, and so they it is part of a research project, so okay. it's not just for fun. Right. Um, we work with uh, Willem Rosenberg in, uh, at Ohio University where uh, the students are taking data about, about the turtles. So they're measuring them and they're weighing them and looking at their growth um, for a larger, larger research project. And then the ultimate uh, benefit is that we have more terrapins in our, out in our, in our waters, yes? Yes, exactly. So there's their, the, the biggest thing is kind of getting them through that early stage for survival. Yeah, so that they're a little bit bigger and survive a little better. <laughs> and our and our students have a, a hand in all of that. Yes, that is amazing because they they can actually look to see I did that I, I contributed in this way. That's really and, awesome. And each year, uh, Dr. Rosenberg does a uh, he does a goes out and actually recaptures a lot of them, and we're able to say whether Swimmy came from Shipley's Choice or whatever. We see these turtles years later um, where he can document how they're doing. That's beautiful. Yeah. What a great uh, extended long term research project too, just to be able to document that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about our association with NOAA. What is, uh, what is our, our relationship there? So NOAA uh, primarily, two different things. One is, is they're a resource. Um, the, the folks in the Chesapeake Bay office were able to really connect with them and, okay. and uh, use them as a resource for, um, you know, for being out in the classroom to um, also you know, helping with different programs and those types of things. Okay. Um, they have been primarily a funding source, so uh, there is a, uh, a grant funding through NOAA um, that we've been utilizing uh, for many years, um, luckily, <laughs> so that yeah, we can sure. support our programs. Uh, more recently is to support professional development for our teachers. Terrific, and, and their associate with association with us really gives credence to what we're doing. They, they wouldn't put their, their support behind something they don't believe in, so <laughs> our, our school system is definitely the beneficiary. How about this thing called Envirothon? Talk to me about that. So Envirothon has um, been around for a long time, okay. and it's basically a competition for uh, high school students um, to do natural resources type careers. I mean, that's the idea, is to kind of get them inspired about doing natural resource type things. So they could be looking at, they look at soils, they look at uh, forestry, wildlife, and a couple of other categories where they compete um, in regard to learning about, about them and, and uh, you know, basically testing on their skills regarding those different, do those different areas. Interesting. And it's just like a... It's like countywide and statewide. So it goes state and then national. So, so. not a science fair-ish but really, a, no, it's really a, a hands-on, yeah, really a hands-on kind of, you know. So they are in the field doing stuff, working with professionals. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And so we, and the other partnership I know we have is uh, this is the Smithsonian. I think they call it Surf. Surf. Cirque. Yes. And talk to me a little bit about that. So the so Smithsonian Environmental Research Center is just another great resource that we have in our county that's directly related in our county and they offer programs where teachers can take students out to Fantastic. to the to the center just like they do at Arlington Echo mm -hmm. um, and then also because they're doing a lot of research which is you know right here on the bay and doing some local stuff we, okay. we do a lot with uh, talking with them in regard to some of the current research that's going on um, and also providing some professional development for our teachers down there too and so there's a, a, a great opportunity from a world-renowned uh, institution, the Smithsonian, and it's literally right here in our in, our, in around the county. Yes. So our accessibility to that and the access to um, utilize their facilities and their knowledge is really it's not really compared to anywhere else, right? Well, we are lucky being in Anne Arundel County because not only we're in Annapolis, but we're not far from D.C. either. And other counties, you know, in Maryland also have outdoor ed centers sure and, have, and sure. have been operating stuff for a long time. Maryland is pretty, uh, I would call it lucky, uh, to have this long history of environmental and outdoor ed. Um, so having all of these resources near, quite near to us, it makes it a makes it a great advantage. You know? Oh, I can imagine, and yeah. and so we leverage that advantage and really try to give as many opportunities as we can, whether that be in classrooms or in outfield experiences, to make the the, the learning come alive. Right, exactly. So, um, tell me a little bit about um, what the future holds for outdoor education and for environmental literacy. Like, where are we headed? What what's your what's some of the goals of of what what your vision is for the future? Well, I think with you know one of the things that 
you know, we know is that we are spending a lot more time in front of digital stuff. You know, our weight Without is increasing. Uh, we're not getting outside very, very much. So I think it's important to get our students out again, so to say, to get sure. them exposed to the environment and get them connected. And I think that's that's one way that we can um, build in our students the idea that you know we need to take care of the environment. You know, and all the way up through adults, right? Sure. You know, and yep. one of the things that we really enjoy is having having all the parent helpers oh, and and our you know chaperones that come out to our programs because we're helping to teach them as well, right? And how they're connected and their impact, mm -hmm. right? So we really really look forward to continuing to to do that, and then continuing to engage our teachers and our students in using that environment to really to really learn right and learn our you know make things very engaging very authentic interdisciplinary you know to really to really build their learning for the regular content so to say sure. into you know a way in which they are learning about the environment as well and and you've mentioned a, a number of times chaperones teachers people to to help sponsor some of the trips we take i would imagine we've got some audience members who are you know this is what they do. This is what they love. This is really how they how they contribute to society. Are there ways to give back? I know we have the environmental science course where we're asking uh, guest speakers to come in to talk to audiences about their roles and responsibilities. Are there ways that to, for someone just to say, "Hey, I've got a really good idea." Absolutely. <laughs> talk to me a little <laughs> bit about. So how they I mean, go about we doing that. you know we are definitely open for many volunteer opportunities in okay. regard to coming out and helping us with our programs okay. and those types of things. We also have um, kind of our adult program, Watershed Stewards Academy. Oh, okay. Um, Tell me which a little is, bit about that. Which is basically a, a it's, it's similar to if you're familiar with Master Gardeners or some of these other types of programs okay. where you basically go through a coursework and the idea is that you're giving back to your community. So. Okay the Master Watershed Stewards go out into their community and kind of really work to help get clean water, right? Oh, so right. working within their communities, it may be helping to put rain barrels or building rain gardens or those types of things, but the idea is really to clean up the water before it reaches our, our, our waterways. And those folks are pretty instrumental in, in, in helping that in Anne Arundel County. We have stewards, we have I think over 150 stewards now, wow. currently um, across the county. Uh, that work in different communities um, doing this this type of work. So if you had to sum it up, put it all in one package, what is environmental literacy and outdoor ed here in Anne Arundel County? Well, environmental literacy and outdoor ed is about engaging our students and really connecting them with the environment, right? We want to bring those opportunities so that, that students learn in an exciting way and so they really connect to it. We want them to, you know, have the knowledge about the environment and, and the, you know, the skills uh, regarding you know how they work with the environment sure. but we also want them to have the motivation and that motivation really is to connect and help take care of of, of our planet to heart help. driven no oh, yes yes. <laughs> awesome. yes well Absolutely. dr parker dr parker we appreciate you so much for coming onto the show thank you for your wealth of knowledge and for sharing your vision and how uh, folks in our community can be engaged thank you skip on behalf of the entire environmental literacy office i wanted to thank you all for being a part of today's show. We thank you for joining us now and we look forward to seeing you again here on Course in Anne Arundel County. Today I come to you with exciting news about School Meals. School Meals offers students a healthy school breakfast and lunch. Every day, students are offered unlimited choices of fresh fruits and vegetables. Students are encouraged to select up to two cups of fresh produce each day at lunch from our unique salad bars. You may also monitor your child's school meals online at My Payments Plus. This is a convenient tool we offer to all parents to make managing your school meal accounts a simple process. To learn more about My Payments Plus, simply visit www.mypaymentsplus.com or call 877-237-0946. Each year, families have the ability to apply for free or reduced price meals. The application to apply is online. Parents, you may log on to applyformeals.aacps.org. The process is fast, easy, convenient, and it's accessible from any computer. Remember, if you received meal benefits last year, you must complete a new application each school year. 
Thank you for this opportunity to provide you this valuable information pertaining to school meals. School meals fuel your child's brain and body for academic excellence. If you have any questions regarding the healthy school meals offered, please contact me at 410-222-5900. I'm George Arlotta, Superintendent of Anne Arundel County Public Schools, and you're watching AACPS-TV.